Welcome to Intro to Logic. In this video, we will learn two new rules of inference, the rule of assumption and modus ponens. Let's get started. Let's begin with the rule of assumption as our first rule of inference. According to this rule, we are free to assume any sentence or claim that we want to as a premise in our argument. And we can abbreviate the rule of assumption with the letter A. So for example, consider the premise if it snows, school will be canceled. And the second premise, it snows. According to the rule of assumption, we can assume number one and two as assumptions in our argument, and then ask ourselves what we can infer from these two premises, if anything. So notice that if it snows, school will be canceled, combined with the premise that it snows, allows us to infer the further premise, school is canceled, or will be canceled. Now let's write this into logical notation. It snows, we can symbolize with the letter S, and the sentence school will be canceled can be symbolized with the letter C. So for the first premise, we can say if s then c. Notice that if it snows is our antecedent and we know that because if gives it away and c is our consequent. Premise 2 is sentence it snows which is symbolized with s and therefore c school will be canceled. Notice that the therefore sign can be symbolized with three little dots kind of in the shape of a triangle, and that just means therefore. We'll be seeing a lot of that. And furthermore, notice that when we do our formal proofs, we'll have to write what rules we use to infer each premise. So to the right of the line, be sure to write what rule it is you used. Here we have an assumption, and premise two is also assumption, and we use line one and line two and the rule of modus ponens, which we'll learn about in a second, to infer the conclusion C. And that's how we use the rule of assumption. So keep in mind that the rule of assumption shows us that we're really focused on how sentences and premises are related, and not so much on the truth or the falsity of our premises. We don't know whether it will in fact snow tomorrow, or if it would snow that school would be canceled. We don't need to know that premise one and premise two are in fact true in order to infer that if they were true, school would be canceled. Our second rule of inference will be modus ponens. We can abbreviate this rule with the letters MP. And according to modus ponens, if we have a conditional and the antecedent of that conditional, then we can deduce the consequent. So for example, if I have the conditional if p then q as my first premise and p as my second premise, I can then conclude the consequent of the first premise, q. And notice that this is the case because modus ponens says if we have a conditional, which we have the conditional if p then q in premise 1 and you have the antecedent of the conditional, which in this case we do because the antecedent of premise one is P, we can then deduce the consequent of that conditional, which in this case is Q. Consider the following example. Premise one, if it rains, it pours. Premise two, it rains. According to modus ponens, because we have a conditional and the antecedent of the conditional, we can then infer the consequent of the conditional, which in this case is the sentence it pours. Let's break it up into symbolic notation. Our first premise is going to be the conditional. If it rains, then it pours. We can symbolize it rains with the letter R and it pours with the letter P. 
So we would have if r, then p, and this is an assumption. According to premise two, it rains, which is the letter r, and again, an assumption. And using modus ponens and lines one and two, we can then conclude p, it pours. So you'd write one, two, mp over here. So we have a conditional, the antecedent of the conditional, and we derive the consequent of that conditional. Consider one more example. I will buy a dog if I have the money. Premise two, I have the money. Using premises one and two, we can conclude that I will in fact buy a dog. And the reason that we can conclude this is that we have as our first premise a conditional. If I have the money, I will buy a dog. And then we have the antecedent of that conditional, I have the money. So we conclude the consequent of the conditional, I will buy a dog. Let's write it out in symbolic notation. Premise one, if I have the money, I will buy a dog. Or in other words, I will buy a dog if I have the money. Let's symbolize the sentence, I have money or the money with the letter M. And the sentence, I will buy a dog with the letter B. So if I have the money, then I will buy a dog. Premise two says, I in fact do have money or the money and therefore, we can conclude the consequent B, I will buy a dog. Premise one and two are assumptions and line three happens to be deduced from the rule modus ponens. And that's how you write it. This has been an intro to logic video on the rule of assumption and modus ponens. Hopefully by now you have a better grasp of each of these rules of inference. See you next time.